Okay, today's video we're going to do something really, really exciting. Something I wanted to do a long, long time. This is Chandra, by, by the way. And Hello. She's doing a, she's a friend of mine from Ireland. She's doing her master's degree on um, what we will be covering in this video, which is basically a garden a scientific study, a garden experiment uh, with 64 garden beds. And it's going to be uh, comparing compost tea versus EM and versus biochar. We'll explain more in this video on how we're setting up the trial and so you can actually also set up your own trial and we'll at the end of uh, four or five videos we'll give you actually the results as well what our findings are. Right so Chandra is going to explain a little bit about the different treatments that we'll be adding to the 64 beds. We'll get to the, the beds now in a minute as well but first we need to really explain all the different treatments we're going to be using. So, what are they? Alright, so we are um, testing biochar, compost tea, EM, and sterile, a version of sterile compost tea that we will um, kill all the life off by boiling it. So, um, the main bit is um, that the experiment is kind of split in two parts four treatments with biochar and four treatments <coughs> without biochar. And on these, um, these four will then be just added cow dung, the next one will be EM and the um, next one will be compost tea and then sterile compost tea. And we will add all these four things um, on biochar and also on without biochar. Mm -hmm. So um, the reason we're doing this um, is because you just want to find a nice method um, of um, improving the soil quite quickly and improving the soil life and boosting plant health and vigor and all that. So um, biochar is a fantastic um, soil amendment, especially in the tropics where um, the, um, the nutrients leach really quickly and absolutely. sandy soil, monsoon rains, just washes everything away. Yeah, so we're, we're going to look at if the biochar has a good ability of improving um, the structure of the soil and the availability of nutrients to the plants. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is now compost tea and EM. So Everyone who does organic gardening has um, heard of either of them and um, we're just going to look at are they the same, is there any difference, do they even work all that well? Mm -hmm. um, and um, then we're going to also see in combination with the biochar because we are thinking you know that biochar is giving a lots of lovely habitat, lots of space to live for these creatures the where they can the hold on. The bacteria and the microbes, yeah. Where they can actually hold on to, to something rather than on like this, this grain of sand where they can't hold on very well. So we're going to see if the combination is much more beneficial than either on it by mm. itself. And we're doing only a, right now we're doing a four month trial but we, after you leave, we are hoping to actually continue it on for maybe up to about two years because you might not see an effect after four months. Maybe you will. I mean, maybe we will. Absolutely. So like it has it even too. shown that um, the biochar, in order to work, will take about a year or two until you actually see a difference in mm. the... In the West. I mean, in the tropics, the it West. could be six months. So. Absolutely. So we will... Yeah. This, will gonna, this is going to be very interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't wait to see what how it pans out and... And finally we will know EM, compost tea, biochar, how do they all work together? Do even, they work? Is it even the life, if it works, is it even the life in the compost tea that makes a difference? So right. we're going to sterilize some of it mm. and then we're going to see if it boosts the plants just as well because it could just be all the nutrients in the bacteria that in actually... In the dead bodies of the bacteria. Exactly. Yeah. And rather than the activity of the life. So yeah. we're going to see what actually makes a difference. So stick around, there's going to be about five videos at least and we'll at the end do the results as well. Shall we have a look at the beds? Absolutely, let's go. Let's go. Yep. Right, so these are the beds. We have 64 beds and before I actually go into talking about why did we actually sink them into the ground, maybe I was thinking, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit first and just explain? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm Chandra and I'm a master's student from Ireland and um, as part of my organic uh, horticulture master's I have to do a uh, trial that's relevant and instead of doing it in Ireland and getting rained on I thought it'd be uh, much more interesting and fun to come to India and do it with my good friend David who knows an absolute bomb about 
actually planting oh, things. That's nice. And it's nice <laughs> to have you here as well. So that's great. You know? Yeah. Okay. Right. So here we are, 64 containers, and we stuck them all, every single one, into the ground. We spent about, over the last year, making the soil as bad as you can possibly get it. <laughs> because, like, we've weeded it, we've, we've dug it, we kept digging it. Um, we basically, even this soil now, we re-loosened every single container as well, just to give it a, a, a nice looseness and everything is exactly the same. Uh, the soil is nice and loose and so that's pretty good. Now, why have we gone through all that effort to stick them into the ground? And the reason being is because there's two reasons. One is when we are applying our treatments to our plants, which will be happily growing in the center of each container, what will happen is we don't want any of those treatments to dissipate into the side of the ground, the ground surrounding it. And the second reason is because there's a thing called mycorrhizal fungi and these tend to attach themselves to the roots of plants. They can even like um, one fungi can attach itself to several plants. So you see the dilemma if we actually have like 64 plants here and there's one fungus it could ruin the whole kind of experiment because you know the the, the plant, the mycorrhizal fungal, will take nutrients from over here and give it only to some plants and not to others. So we have to isolate each plant we're putting in there uh, to make sure that our trial won't be off. We don't want the plants to steal nutrients from the other types of treatments so For that instance. we can actually see the difference. Yeah, so what she said. <laughs> yes, I do go on a bit. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look at why have we got two different container sizes. So let's bring you in a little bit closer so you see what we mean. Let me explain a little bit more about the um, design of the experiment. So we have 64 different containers and we only have eight treatments that we explained about earlier. So how does the math add up here? So we have eight different replicates um, for each treatment. So each treatment will be repeated eight times so that later we can actually do a bit of maths on it and analyze differences. So um, we're just going to bring that up here so you can look at the treatments and get them straight in your head. Okay, so Chandler just mentioned we have 64 beds and basically the way we got these containers is we took 32 dustbins, we cut the bottom of each dustbin and then lengthway cut them in half and that meant we have 64 containers that we could actually put into the soil. Now, having said that, so that means we have two different sizes. This one is 52 centimeters in diameter at the, at the top level, and this one is 48 uh, centimeters in diameter. Now, I have pull, pulled out a lot of eggplants here in the tropics, and usually the, the roots are only about that size. For some reason, roots are much smaller here in the tropics, so they won't be congested by the smaller container. Uh, so that shouldn't really affect it. Um, now, is this going to be an ideal thing? Is it going to affect the plants? Probably not. Is it ideal for us? Well, it's probably not the best thing we could have done. It would have probably been better to uh, purchase all the same size, but we would have had a lot of wastage that way, and it would have cost a lot more money. So, do you want to talk a little bit about your, your professor did okay it? Yeah, so uh, basically, um, when I asked my professor about that, he said it should uh, not be a, um, a big problem um, if we put the plants exactly in the center and we adjust the treatments that we are putting um, so that we put slightly more cow dung or charcoal in here than in here. We're talking grams here. Grams, yeah. 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 So um, then the other thing is that we have to make sure that, um, you remember when I talked about replicates earlier, so that the four of the repetitions of each treatment are in um, the big size and four on the small size. So um, that way we um, make sure there's no uh, difference between the treatments due to the container size difference. Mm -hmm. Because each treatment is going to have exactly four small ones, four big ones. Exactly. So that should be no problem in that regard. It just makes the maths a bit more complicated and running the trial a bit more complicated. So if you're doing anything like that uh, at home, work with what you've got, but just try to keep everything as equal as possible if you can, because that will just make the whole show a lot easier. So when doing a scientific study in the field, you have to adjust for the environmental factors, for example, differences in sunlight or um, a bit of a slope or things like that. So it could be a fluke. That if you just did one replicate, you, it could have just been a fluke. But eight? Exactly. With eight, it, we're pretty solid. 
um, the higher the numbers, the more solid, solid you are, but eight is pretty good. So um, what we do though, for example, if you put all the plants of the same treatment in one row, that could be the sunny row, and then the plants do better, and then you don't know, is it because they got more sunlight or is it because of your treatment? So what you do then is you um, get a list of random numbers. You can get it on a random number generator. We did it in Excel. There's a function um, which is called rand and it will generate a list of random numbers for you also. You can even do it on online, they have uh, random uh, calculators, you could do it there. Exactly. Yeah. And with your, your list of random numbers, you match to your list of treatments that you're doing. So you could say um, treatment 1, um, replicate 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And um, then it's matched to a random number, and that random number might be uh, 8, 16, 24, so, and, so uh, what that means is basically, we'll, we'll show you now, a, we'll put over this video now a, a design, a drawing where you can actually see exactly our treatments and our, how we randomized it, just so you can see where exactly every treatment is going to be. Exactly, and you see basically there's a few that are next to each other that actually happens in randomization. Mm. That when it, uh, that uh, treatment age you have maybe three in a row or something like that, that happens and you just let it be that way because that's what your random number list said. And How did you include the four smaller ones versus the, and the four, so you basically did like four small ones, four big ones per treatment, but mm. you, how did you set that up? So basically I had to split, this is where it comes in that it's more work for us to do. So we had to do two different lists, one for the big uh, plots and one for the small plots and get a list of random numbers for each and then um, matching up how they lie in the plot. So there was a bit of extra work but it was no problem and you can see here um, how it is done exactly. Yeah, just show you that again. Pause the video if you want to have a look at that. So these then are our seed trays. You'll notice right away that we have way too many than we actually need. But that is something really important. And especially because we tried it once with corn, pretty much a similar setup, but they all died a horrible death because the ants got them. So anything can actually happen. So always having more is a very important thing. First of all, let me just show you, we are using a F1 variety. And the reason for that is because we want as much uniformity in the plants because the plants are going to be the thing that we're going to use to determine um, how well is each treatment going to work. So you can see here, even with F1 varieties, you have some uh, differences because of germination. So some would have germinated earlier than others, but we can select exactly 64 that are going to be exactly the same size. So uh, here we go. This is a wonderful... Um Cow, actually, excuse me, it's not cow dung, it's mostly buffalo dung and um, that we collected from the field right over there where there's buffalo grazing. So we dry it out, we mix a little bit of ash into it and then uh, we just store it until we need it. So we're going to put in about um, 500 grams or so per square meter to give the plants a bit of a, the boost because it's just pure sand out there so the eggplants are not going to do very well with just the sand. Um, so we're going to put this in each single treatment as well. So enough that the eggplants will grow, but not so much as to um, give them so many nutrients that every single one is going to be fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. Um, one so thing you need to mention, I just thought of as well, we are going to of course mix all the cow dung at the end together so that everything is the same, exactly the same. We did as well do the same with the seedlings, with the seed trays, just to quickly mention that here at this point. We mixed the, the potting compost really well, so everything, all the seedlings got exactly the same nutrients as well. Yeah, that's super. Good to thought what about. else have we got? So, we also have a lovely biochar over here. There's another video of how to make this. So, um, this particular biochar is just made from coconut fiber. And um, that is so that it's more replicable. You know, it's easier to say, um, if someone wants to try the same thing, it's easier to say just coconut fiber than a lane use collection of tropical woods. So mm -hmm. that, this is why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. How much are we gonna put in each one? Uh, we're gonna put 500 grams per square meter. How many beds is it gonna be? Half. Ah, 32. 32. Okay. Right, thanks Chandra. That was the end. This concludes this video. I hope it wasn't too lengthy. We just thought we'll just give you every single detail that you could possibly want because when you're doing a kind of a, a series as well, you want all the information up front. 
uh, so you can decide if you want to watch it further and see how it goes as well. So make sure to share it with all your friends, gardening friends, because I think this is going to be very interesting to see how well does actually EM and Composty do and compare to each other as well. And that's it. Thanks, Chandra. And we shall be seeing, or you shall be seeing more of us in future videos as well.